everyone. Welcome and happy Wednesday. Let's see how we're doing here. Holy smokes, I've already got a bunch of gals on from uh, coming in from watching YouTube. Let's just see if we've got our Facebook friends coming in as well. Hello, everybody. New Mexico, Ohio, Colorado, Washington. Oh, there's somebody from Minburn, Alberta, just uh, just near me here in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, Manitoba, welcome. Illinois, Tennessee. Hello, everyone. I think we're getting our Facebook. Yeah, there we go. We're getting our Facebook gals in now. Hello, everyone. Well, welcome, welcome. If we haven't met before, before I say hi to you, to all of you. My name is Noreen Smith. I'm the Product Development Creative Manager for Creative Memories. And each and every Wednesday, I get to be with you and we do some fast and fun things together. We do some projects. We do share some tips and tricks and ideas and inspiration. So we always have a great time. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. If you're, you're an old veteran uh, at joining me, uh, welcome back. And I don't mean old in that way, but you know, if you're a veteran watching, <laughs> welcome back. So um, we've got some fun things to do today. We are going to do some scrappy hacks. And for those of you, I, I love watching like life hack videos, you know, uh, a, a faster, easier, cheaper, better way of doing something. And that's what we're going to kind of focus on today. Uh, in particular, thinking about how we can use a couple of types of papers that always seem to give people some problems in faster, easier, better ways. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Somebody on Facebook saying old veteran CM scrapbooker here. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, we've got Gail from Ontario is here. Oh, uh, UK distributor. That must be Sharon, our friend from uh, the United Kingdom. Thanks for joining us. I did see some Australian friends here. We've got uh, California in upstate New York, Ontario. We've got all, all kinds of places here. So I always enjoy seeing everybody. Uh, and I mentioned that we do this every Wednesday live. I'm going to mention this now just in case I forget at the end. But next week, I won't be live. I will be live somewhere else. I will actually be um, this time next week. I think I will be in the sunny city of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I'm going to be there with 104 of my favorite scrappy advisors. We've got 104 Creative Memories advisors who are traveling next week to Puerto Vallarta as part of the escape, the Creative Memories advisors escape. They've all worked so hard in 2023 to earn the trip and we are going to be having a great time celebrating their achievements. So next week, I will not be live, but I will have a pre-recorded episode for you. So definitely, you know, grab a cup of coffee, sit down and join me um, and watch the pre-recorded episode. And if you remember probably about a month ago or so, six weeks ago, uh, I was sick and we posted that, you know, we'd love to hear some of your questions and some of the things that you want to see uh, me talk about or some of the things that you want me to give tips about um, for when I'm not available to do a live. So next week is the first time I'm going to be traveling over the next little while. So we will have that pre-recorded episode and I'll be talking about a lot of your frequently asked questions. So I won't be here, but make sure that you still tune in. And then I'll be back with you two weeks from today live. Okay? So if there's any of our advisors that are heading to Mexico, drop a little, you know, a little sunshine or something in the comments to let me know that you are going to be there and that I'm going to be seeing you. All right. So, yeah, I think it is going to be a blast. And I... So Tamara is saying her sister Tasha will be there. Yes, so I'll be looking forward to seeing Tasha. All right, so let's get started. Um, as I mentioned, for Scrappy Hacks today, what we're going to be talking about is using some papers that many of you find challenging to use. And I'm talking specifically about hero papers or what you might think of as statement papers, uh, heavily patterned papers that seem kind of busy perhaps uh, or are very very thematic plus 
some of the papers that have a scene on them or are photographic or, um, you know, have a lot of area that you don't know where to place the photos. So we're going to be talking about those and I'm going to give you some really easy ways to work with those papers, get them out of your stash and use them up in great looking layouts. You can create easy layouts with these and sometimes they're actually easier than you think and sometimes we overthink them. So some of the tips I'll give you today, I hope you're going to be running to pull out all of your different photographic papers and scenic papers and, you know, really busy pattern papers and try some of these. Okay, so let's, uh, let me flip you over to my table here and let's talk about our brand new collection, Life at the lake so excited about this collection uh, we know so many of you have asked for um, you know water and camping and outdoors uh, but not necessarily tropical or ocean that kind of thing uh, many of us in North America anyways uh, have a lot of outdoor adventures at lakes uh, here in Canada, I've got beautiful lakes very close to me here in the mountains, all throughout British Columbia. Uh, I know my colleagues down at home office in Minnesota, you know, tons and tons of lakes. We've got the Great Lakes. There's often a body of water associated with a lot of our outdoor adventures. So that's what life at the lake is really all about. But I know, and I saw some comments right after it was previewed, that people are like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with those papers because they're either very scenic in the case of the fast to fab papers or they're very thematic and heavily patterned in the, as in the case of the designer papers. So we're going to talk about all of those, but just look at the colors in this collection. We love the addition of the red. That just really freshens up a collection that typically would just be greens and blues. So we love that. And look at these patterns. They are all of the quintessential sort of outdoor camping, cottagey, cabin types of patterns. We've got the buffalo check. We've got all of those fun fishing lures. And that's one of the ones that we're going to use. I love this one. It reminds me of kind of, you know, lake uh, lake resort maps that you would get in the 50s and 60s. Canoes and kayaks. We've got some great um, little critters in amongst the trees and then a great plaid that has all of the colors. So when you first look at this collection, you, you sort of think, yeah, wow, those are great patterns, but how am I going to use them? So first off, I want to remind you to always look at the back side of our papers because typically we have a more toned down version of the pattern that's on the front or a, a truly tonal type of pattern. In this case, we have some nice little diamonds. We kind of have this ombre stripe, kind of reminds me of, you know, the sun glinting off the water. A nice, a dark polka dot of wood grain. We've got some, um, kind of looks like reeds or foliage that you'd see by the lakeshore and then some nice little stars and bursts on that pale canary yellow. So there is lots of pattern, but there's also lots of tonal papers to use. So we're going to be focusing on that. And of course, we're going to be talking about how to incorporate some cardstock. All of our coordinating cardstocks have been listed on our paper packs for almost a year now. Um, so it makes it easy for you to pull a cardstock color to tame down some of those patterns. Of course, for um, our embellishments, we've got our sticker pattern, sticker three pack, and we've got four different embellishment packs that really kind of showcase different aspects of life at the lake. And this allows us to really kind of get into some of those sort of niche activities. So in on the lake, you're going to see boats and pontoons and life vests and the things that you would bring for a day uh, on the lake, on the water. In the gone fishing, this is going to be great for all of those fishermen or fisherwomen in your life. Um, you know, and I make, I <laughs> forgive my, you know, my sense of humor. You're going to fall for this one, hook, line, and sinker. Ha, ha, ha. And then we've got a more of a camping theme because again, a lot of times we're camping or hiking around lakes. And then, you know, if you're just, 
if you've got maybe a cabin or a cottage on the lake, a lot of what you do is entertaining and getting together with people, enjoying some great food, relaxing, that kind of thing. So we've got all four of those little uh, embellishment packs that work perfectly with all of the papers. Of course, the variety map pack, and I love some of these. Um, the, the illustration style, Alex, our designer who created this uh, collection, really leaned into that vintage or nostalgic sort of illustration style. So it's really a fun style to work with. Then we've got the Tent and Trees Border Maker cartridge, which creates a great little border. And then the Life at the Lake Fast to Fab inspired designer paper pack. And this is my favorite. And I hope that by the end of our episode today, it's going to be one of your favorites. Because I know, I saw the comments, many of you are going, oh, that's too cartoony. It's too, I can't use that. That's not going to work with my photos. So I'm going to give you some tips and ideas on how it can work with your photos and how it's going to actually showcase your photos really, really beautifully. And then before I put away all of these gorgeous products, I just have to remind you that the new album, Cobalt Blue with Dusted Blue Metallic uh, Foiling, that's going to be the perfect album for all of your lake, life at the lake um, layouts. So absolutely gorgeous collection. I'm sure that so many of you are already uh, planning your layouts, but let's talk about using some of these papers, okay? So I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about both the patterned and the fast fab. So let's start with the patterned paper. Now, there's a couple of things that are important to remember no matter what type of pattern it is uh, or what, <coughs> excuse me, or if it's an overall pattern or a fast fab, a scenic paper, etc. Contrast is everything. So in order for your photos to stand out from any, any type of pattern, you want to have some contrast, okay? And when you have a busy pattern, like many of these are, it's really difficult to find contrast, okay? So I wanna work with some photos. I actually found a bunch of photos uh, of, my, uh, of my son when he was really small, my son Grayson when we were camping and at, at another lake, but I didn't have any fishing photos. So I am using a couple of stock photos there, but I wanna do a fishing layout. So I'm gonna pull this fantastic fishing paper. And of course it has all of these fun little, you know, fish and lures. And I just love the look of that and such a great color scheme. But when we put the photos on, these ones aren't too bad because there's a lot of kind of light colors but they just don't really stand out. They kind of, you know, are overpowered by the patterned paper. So there's a few things that we can do to create some better contrast between the photos and the background. And when our photos get lost like this, the easiest thing to do is to map them. So I'm just gonna show you just really quickly with a piece of white cardstock here, but a simple white mat, just look at how the, the border on this side really separates the uh, photo from the background paper. So no mat over on this side, mat on this side. So the easiest thing you can do if you want to use a, uh, you know, a heavily patterned paper, no matter what your photo arrangement is, the easiest thing you can do to create some contrast is to mat your photos or if you have um, the ability to print your photos with a white border, that makes it even faster. You don't even have to cut any cardstock. You're just going to uh, use your photos with the white border. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, check and see where you get your photos printed if you have that option. If you print your photos at home, like I do sometimes, um, experiment, look at your manual, look online to see how to get your photos printed with a white border. I promise it's the fastest way to have a really clean and simple layout. But I'm actually going to pull in uh, some other colors because again, with our coordinating cardstock colors, anytime you want to do some matting, you can pull in one of these colors and it will 
help bring the layout together, but still create contrast. So I've got some uh, island waters, dark sea green kind of colors. I've got the blue, I've got green. I could use red, I could use canary. I'm gonna use the blue. So I've just gone ahead and actually I'm just gonna attach them right now as we speak. I've gone ahead and cut my mats just slightly bigger than my photos and I'm just gonna mat them. And already that makes a huge, huge difference. So just that little bit of a contrasting border separates and really helps the photos to stand out. So if you're not a matter, <laughs> if you don't mat your photos, uh, definitely think about that. Now really, no matter where I put my photos on this layout, they're going to stand out really, really nicely. One other way that we can create contrast is to use those tonal papers that are often on the back side of our, of our papers uh, because when colors contrast, it's often easier to see the, the photos and the elements that we add versus when they're on a pattern background. But man, that, that fish paper is so cute. So how do I use it? Well, of course I could bring in, you know, there's always two pieces, so I could bring in a second piece and I could maybe add a border down here uh, or do something like that. But maybe it's my Scottish nature, maybe it's my frugalness, or maybe it's just the fact that I wanna get every inch of this paper. And if I wanna do a two page spread, I don't wanna be, you know, cutting up one piece and then having to open another pack so that I have two, you know, green, I can use the, I could use the back sides as my base pages, but then how do I use the front side? So really what I like to do is either cut or gut. And we could either take this paper and gut out the center, right? And then we could have, you know, the outside as the frame and then flip over the gutted piece uh, to place back in the center, or even simpler is just to cut a strip and then we can piece it back together. So this is like frugal scrapbooking hack as well. I think I'm just gonna do about a, well, let's do three. Let's do a three inch cut. I'm just gonna cut it off the bottom there. Let me get this out of the way. And basically I'm gonna flip over the top and I'm gonna use the bottom as my border. Okay, and then that way, of course, I've got the I've got the um, the pattern, and I've got the neutral. So then I can really still feature that pattern quite heavily. I could do the same at the top. We could even just cut off a one inch strip at the top here. Now you're probably saying, well, but how do I get them back together? So if you scrapbook onto um, your album pages, you can just take these pieces and you know adhere them right onto your album pages just as is but if you don't you can always do a quick little surgery you can always do a quick little welding so we're just going to flip over to the back side i've just got a i'm gonna have to cut another piece but i've just got about a three quarter inch piece of white cardstock and then I'm going to pull out my photo tape. I could use my tape runner, but I like the photo tape for this because it's going to A, give me a nice strong bond, and it's already in a nice long strip. So I don't have to kind of, you know, piece together a bunch of smaller, smaller pieces. So I'm just going to adhere that to my little welding strip. If you, uh, if you use a Cricut, you know all about welding. Welding is just really joining. Okay, and then we're just gonna pull the backing off of our photo tape. I'm just gonna have to get that down so that the adhesive sticks, but the backing comes off. Of course, it won't, won't, it won't work while I'm, while I'm live, right? Okay, and then we're just going to Join this together as evenly as we can with our little welding strip. Now, some of you have washi tape at home. Washi tape's gonna work great for this as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip over to the adhesive side. 
Okay, and then so I've created a border, but I'm still only using that one piece of paper. Let me cut another strip. Just need a little strip. Actually, maybe I'll just use some washi. Uh, no, none handy. So let's cut another three quarter inch strip. And we'll do the same thing. But as I said, if you like to scrapbook uh, directly onto your album pages, then it's even easier for you because you don't have to weld your pieces together. You're just going to adhere your pieces to the refill page or to a cardstock piece, whatever you like to use. Okay. So I'm doing it like this so that I have the borders in, on the side that I'm going to scrapbook on. I have the borders in the green. I'm just going to have to cut off that little bit of extra there. I have the border, or sorry, the borders are the fish and the, uh, the regular paper or the ground is the green. So now I'm just going to kind of connect all of that by making sure my photos go onto the yellow up here and onto the yellow down here. And we've used a very busy pattern paper. We've used the whole piece. We haven't had to add in a second piece. Uh, you know, it, it's an easy way to use that whole piece of paper. All right, so once we've got something like that down, really quick, we can go through and start to bring in some of that yellow color with our, let's put it just over here on a bit of an angle. We can pull in some of our fun little sayings. Where's my fishing ones? I, and I just, I have these on a piece of white cardstock just because I was doing videos about them. But, you know, I can do something like, like this. I've just attached them with some um, repositionable adhesive. So it can go like that. Uh, you know, keeping it real would be fun. Maybe we're going to do that over here because we don't have a lot going on up there. I think this actually looks better maybe in the middle. You can do some journaling in here and then just emphasize the fish. Maybe he's going to go in there. Maybe it's going to go up there. Maybe with some, some foam squares. Okay, so quite a quick layout to get done even though we have uh, cut or gutted, cut or gut our, our, uh, our paper. Okay, but we use lots of the pattern. We use the tonal all in one piece. Okay, so that's my first kind of tip for working with anything that's heavily patterned. And if you want to preserve the paper, use as much of the paper as you can. Cut or gut and mat, whether you're matting with white or you're matting with, uh, in my case, I use, I use the blue, okay? So that's the first sort of set of hacks or tips for doing something with a lot of patterns. So that's from the patterned paper pack. Let's talk about the Fast to Fabs now, because I know, I know those are the ones that are uh, giving you some giving you some, some issues. All right. So just a look at these. Oh, they are so fun. And again, somebody mentioned online, they thought they looked a little cartoony. This is a really sort of vintage illustration style. And if you think back to think even to like the movie, dirty dancing, you know, when they go to the, they go and spend the summer at the, the lakefront resort. And there's all these kinds of, you know, great fun things to do. That's kind of the feel we're going for here. So that's the uh, kind of the marsh or the, the fields. Then there's this great one for camping. I love this one. And then we've got the lake. And I often put this in the wrong order, but I think it goes more like this. But you can see, even though it doesn't quite um, match up the opposite way, you could definitely do it this way as well. Okay, so let's look at each one of these. And let's make a layout with each one of these. Now, we've had uh, other Fast to Fab inspired papers 
and other photographic papers. And uh, we've actually, I went through our, um, I went through our online to see what papers we have in other packs that you might have some of the same problems with. So on screen right now, you see two photographic papers. Um, one of a geyser, which I'm assuming was a photograph from Yellowstone, one of the Grand Canyon. So those are from the Leave Nothing Behind paper pack. And that is, those two papers in particular uh, were some of the papers I would get questions on. How do I use these? What can I do with them? The next two that kind of are grayed or toned down are from the Wanderlust paper pack. And that was our travel collection. Uh, there is, it's still around, but that was before Passport to Adventure. So you see the road there, you see that beautiful aerial shot of the mountains and trees. Again, more photographic papers that sometimes can be difficult to work with. Then on the bottom row, the first one you see is Sunflower Fields. It's got a beautiful watercolor background, but then it has a design on the corner, uh, kind of almost like a frame. The next paper over is from What a Zoo 2. Same kind of thing that uh, we've got designs in opposite corners and kind of a blank or a more neutral field in the middle. Then we've got a paper, beautiful paper from Serene Waters of that gorgeous sunset, all the different colors. And then the last one, absolutely stunning, like an aerial beach view. And that is from the Sydney Scenes um, paper pack. So those are some of the, the papers that you might see in your paper packs, our current paper packs, or you might also have some other types of papers that are along those lines and you just don't know what to do with them. Okay, so let's start with the camping one. And this is, this is the one that I was mentioning. I found some photos, super fun. These were from, I believe, 2009, and they were my husband's family reunion on the Canada Day weekend up in uh, northern Alberta. Here's, you know, we're around the campfire, everybody's together. Uh, some, we are, I don't have a lot of photos, but some really nice memories here, so I want to use those. But if I just start kind of putting things down here, you know, I'm, I'm losing... I'm losing the background, I'm losing the feel, uh, and I don't see the photos. They don't stand out. In this case, this is probably the easiest fix yet. Remember what I said about contrast. Contrast is everything. What we need to do, even before we think about whether we want to map these or not, is we just need to move our photos to where there is the most contrast. So literally, by just moving our photos into this sort of open area here. Let's see, maybe we could put this one up top here. And maybe then these two could go down at the bottom, something like this, okay? So even just doing that, now we've created a purposeful sort of scene. We can see the trees and the bottom and the little campfire and that acts basically as our theme. It acts as our embellishments. This frames up the photos now just beautifully. So when I had them over like this, you know, you, you, you lose the paper and you lose the photos. So have a look and see where you could move your photos to that would have the most amount of contrast. And even down here, for example, you know, there's a my uncle or my husband's uncle in a yellow jacket. You know, if, if I move it around, I don't see it as much because there's less contrast. So move your photos around until you have the most contrast possible. Okay, so now that yellow is contrasting against the bottom there. And Ironically, we've got yellow and yellow. So now it's starting to look, you know, intentional. Now it's starting to look like, wow, those papers were made for those photos. So that's the first tip for using something like this. Try to arrange your photos in the area that would have the most contrast with your photos. All right. 
So definitely I could, somebody's saying the campfire pick over here. Well, here's, here's my thought process. If I put them like this, then all of a sudden I have a bit more of a jumble. And I don't want to put the campfire down here because then that's the only place I have a campfire. So because these two photos are similar, that's my thought process of putting those together over here and then keeping the photos that kind of are at work together on this page. And then I also do kind of that spacing out of the campfire and I can reinforce that we're around the campfire. So again, it's all in how you think about it and there are no right or wrongs. It would look great that way as well. But what I could do is come in with our fun little campfire here and I could put another campfire, you know, down here to kind of make that scene uh, work as a campfire as well. So then I kind of have this triangle of campfires. But, you know, just adding a couple of embellishments. I like that maybe, you know, kind of on the edge of that photo. I like that down there. Uh, maybe, maybe just even a, a small little you know, something tucked in there. That's going to bring all of the, the photos together. I can do a little bit of journaling up here or down here. So I haven't even matted them, but by moving to, um, moving things around to where there are less, uh, more degree of contrast, that works really well. I see a couple of comments here and somebody was saying I would use an X-Acto knife and slip the picture right behind. And that's definitely something that is fun to do as well. Remember, we're talking about easy hacks here. So I'm, I'm not suggesting people go and spend a ton of time, but yeah, just taking an X-Acto knife and kind of cutting around some of the edges of things here, you would be able to, I don't know if that's deep enough, but you're going to be able to slip your photos kind of underneath and it will look like the trees are coming over top of your photos. So once you get your photos in place, you can kind of figure out what you would need to, to cut. Okay. But that is definitely another option for sort of the, the cut and gut idea. Okay. So that might not work the best with that one, but that would be the idea. So that's another great suggestion. And again, another way, great way to cut. Now I do want to talk about cut and gut one other way here. And in this case, when you look at the back side of these papers, there are some beautiful tonal designs on them. So I love this but this is a great sort of yellow colored wood grain as well. So if you really did not like this area, there is nothing stopping you, where'd my trimmer go, from cutting this paper. So we could definitely, yeah, that's gonna just clear it. So we could definitely come and make those trees, just like we would do, we could uh, weld it on the back, and we could do the same over here. Okay, I might just do right to about there. So I could do the same thing in order to get a more solid kind of center section. And then, you know, if you wanted to add your photos, let's see if these ones would look good over here, right? Then you could add your photos and there's more contrast behind them. Okay, so hopefully those are some good examples for that one, which is the camping scenes. Love the colors in that one. Okay, so let me get this out of the way and let's move on to the next scenic paper. And that is the, I don't, I don't know, I think this would be kind of like a little river or a little stream you know, the, the beautiful grassy area beside them. And uh, a few years, well, it's many years ago now, several years back, we spent time up in uh, Invermeer, British Columbia. I know that we've got some gals who come along and, and watch from that area. So Anne, if you're watching, hello to you. Uh, but we would often go up there. Um, this is Grayson when he was just a wee guy, maybe two, three years old. 
Uh, and it had, you know, it has beautiful lake, um, the mountains in the background, of course, but it also has a lot of kind of more grassy areas. This is a more of a park type of area, but a lot of the marsh areas beside the, the lake, um, people, you know, enjoy doing different, you know, different activities and things. So again, I thought that, you know, these would work really well with something like this paper. So Maybe I'll just kind of come along, let's just play around for a second before we talk about some of the hacks again. So I might do something like that. Um, I've got a couple of different cards that I might want to use. I like that we are lake people. Uh, we could also do these are the good old days. That would be kind of fun. These uh, photos show my mom and dad, who of course have both passed on, but uh, you know, so I love that. So there's a few things I could do here to help. Now this area uh, that I've kind of got my photos in is definitely the area where there is the most contrast. But I could of course come along and map my photos. So I've already kind of got some some mats here. And what I like actually about the white mats in this case and we're going to talk about this in relation to um, the white mat card and the white designs around some of the embellishments. So again, I know that some people prefer uh, embellishments without the white, but we're going to come along and talk about that in just a moment. So I'm just going to quickly map these photos just on white. You can kind of imagine that this is what it would look like if I had them printed with borders. But I think what I'm also going to do, because again, even though most of this area is the area that has or that provides the most amount of contrast, with these photos here, I'm going up into an area that has less contrast. So down here, there's lots of contrast. But as I get up to the top of the photos, not so much. So let's go ahead and trim those down so that we have more contrast. And I've got these trimmed to four and three quarters. So I'm just going to, sorry, three and three quarters. They were originally four, but that would be a little bit better now because I won't have so much um so much of the photo disappearing there. All right, let me see here. What can I do? I'm going to cut off a little bit of his feet, but that's okay because I've got more photos that show him in the car. So I am a big proponent of um, symmetrical photos. So if, if I'm going to, you know, cut something on one side to a certain size, I do like the, the photo on the other side to be the similar. Um, lots of people, you know, kind of look at their photos and say, well, I could never cut that part out. But really, we know that there's water. We see mountains in some of the other places. So I'm not too worried about cutting out some of those. So we could do the little trick with the cutting out this bulrush, you know, cattail there. We could move these up so that we can see them a little bit more. Um, but yeah, just trimming that down just a little bit. Again, oh, it's all about contrast. So now we have contrast and we see the border. Oops, flipping that around. We see the border at the top of the page. And again, our eye goes all the way. Maybe I didn't trim that all the way. Hang on. Um, our eye goes all the way across the layout. And that really helps with, um, what did I do here? I've cut my, I cut my mat too small. That's what I did. So imagine that the mat was the right size, but now we see, you know, the photos, they stand out from the background uh, and that border goes all the way across. So I've really used just the field of the, of the paper. I could trim this down a little bit too, right? So that I see more of this little stream. 
or again do the same little trick with the exacto knife so that I could tuck this in behind okay but that really makes a big difference matting and putting things in the area for the most contrast okay now I do want to just say and again I often say there's no right or wrong but really when you're starting to look at how to make your photos look good don't just kind of you know place them around you do want to try and you know have some kind of intentional arrangement and what I mean by that is again you know looking at the space that you have in between the photos grouping them together um, you know not just kind of putting them wherever okay so again if that's the look you love then please go for it for me I always find that a more symmetrical and even sort of arrangement with the even margins has a much cleaner sort of look and it eliminates distractions I think we've talked about before how um, this is gonna bug me like crazy but we've talked before about how your um, there we go how the the eye travels around a layout and really if you have any diagonals on a layout that creates a lot of movement and a lot of dynamic feel to it so if you want you know to see the border at the top and then you've got some movement coming in down here then you want to keep your photos fairly um fairly regular, fairly symmetrical, and quiet because there's action in the background, if you know what I mean, all right? So we've got the movement happening with the stream. We've got the movement happening across the top with the border. If we keep our photos quiet, it helps to calm the layout, and it really helps us to see all the photos, okay? So some of the hacks, again, just as a reminder, we matted them. We eliminated any place that there was not contrast. Remember how they would have been up like that? So they would have kind of blocked the flow. And then we just really placed them in an area that makes sense for that layout. Okay? Uh, I'm seeing somebody say, now that I see these lake papers used, I really like them. So that's what I'm hoping you're going to see, is that even though that looks like a fairly daunting you know, uh, two pieces of paper to use, really simply arranging your photos based on kind of the space that you have that will be contrasting, that will really create a nice, simple layout. And how easy it is that you don't have to do a lot of embellishment. This really acts as your embellishing uh, or your embellishments. So I could do some journaling down here let's get out the you know the life at the lake something like this would be great because we've got lots of all these fun things here uh you know if if there was something more with a boat i could put in the little uh you know the little paddle board uh the stickers we haven't even really looked at the stickers we've been focusing on the embellishments but again just you know something simple like lake life just down in there just slightly overlapping the photos is going to really make a big statement and of course you could add the borders as well and actually I think that these borders would have worked really well especially this kind of blue one uh, if I would have thought to put that down before I added my photos right so that would have really kind of pulled it all together and echoed the blue so you don't need a lot of embellishments when you use these types of papers. So that is a really big pro, in my opinion. Because once I get my photos organized, I'm, I'm done, basically. Okay? All right, so let's look at the last one, which is the lake itself. And again, it could be this way. Okay, we've got kind of the blue connecting there. Or it could be this way. The blues don't connect as well, but again, once you get your photos on there, that might work better for your photos. So you're gonna wanna take a look and see. Uh, the background on this paper is the nice blue waves, and I forgot to mention, 
that the background on the kind of the field or the marsh paper is this pretty tiny speckle. Okay. So again, I would get two of these packs to tell you the truth because I want to use these, but then I also want to use the solid or more tonal backgrounds with my other papers as well. All right. So my last one here, I have some fun photos of Grayson and his papa, my dad, uh, at the lake shore. Okay. And you can really see how these blue photos, they totally disappear into the background. So I would definitely need to do something here. I would definitely need to do some matting. Um, but let's, let's think about matting in a broader sense. I often like to tell the story of progression. So for example, you know, here Grayson's playing on the beach, Papa's in the water. And then it's like Papa saying, you know, come here, Grayson. So there he turns around and off he goes. And here they are, you know, in the water together. And then I have this other one. Papa's out now, but Grayson wouldn't even get out of the water. So, you know, that's kind of the story progression that I like. So I'm thinking if I kind of arrange them in this way, in that sort of progressive way, that would tell a story, but I can't see the photos. So instead of matting individual photos, I'm going to use some larger pieces and I'm going to kind of create a block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shimmy them together. So these are two four by sixes. So I'm going to butt them up against each other and I've cut my background mat here to, let's see, that's four and four. So that's eight and a half, right? By, uh, sorry, eight and a quarter by six and a half. And now look at what happens. I still have that nice sort of block feeling, but I've matted my photos as a block. So it almost becomes like something on top. It kind of reframes everything. Here I've got, oops, maybe I, did I used the wrong one. I think this is the right one. Yeah, this is the right one. So here I've just got a single photo. Okay, so I'm going to butt that up beside like that. And so now all of a sudden I have that nice continuous grouping of photos. And then this one over here. I'm going to add to a mat and then let's talk about how we can make that one part. So it just kind of floating over here. It looks okay, but watch what happens when I overlap it. I could either just overlap the white part and now it's really connected or I can overlap it right onto the other photo. And again, just connecting it in some way creates that story, that flow across. Your eye sees all the way around with the white border and the white is encompassing all of the photos, but there's still that beautiful sort of scenic element in the background. All right, and then what I thought I would do is I've just got one of the mats here. I'm gonna cut that in half. So this is a four and a half. So let's go, what is that gonna be? <laughs> two and a quarter. And then I thought I could put a little bit above and a little bit below, but I don't need the blue. So I'm just going to cut. I love cutting, fussy cutting out the shapes or different things that are on our mat. And this is going to, again, create a little bit of a connection for me to journal on or to add some photos to. So let's just move that to there. Tuck this underneath. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between there just so that it looks a little bit different. And then I'll come around and do the same over here. Bear with me. I've said this before, but I can't fussy cut really well on camera because I have to take off my glasses and hold things up to my face. <laughs> so 
So now I can kind of create, you know, a little bit more of a distinction around this one, but it's still connected. So again, no matter where I put that, I can, I could move that over like this and I could move these over however you want to arrange it. But just having, even if you just had one, even if you just had one of those little kind of journal boxes, right? Something like that. It's just going to really create that nice sort of white border all the way around that block of photos. And then let's see, let's see what we can do. This one might be, again, we might have on the lake. I like that one because it's got that um, boardwalk or the dock. So that would bring in some of the brown. And even though, you know, I don't have a, a rowboat here, you know, I could do something like this. And that just creates a really nice little vignette, right? Kind of the beginning, all the photos, the end, and I could add my journaling in there. So I like that in terms of blocking or combining or connecting or, you know, separating the uh, photos from the background. We've got that beautiful scene in the background, but that white border all the way around all these photos and having them touch and connect. I often will say that, you know, um, clustering means that they're actually going to touch, right? So that I think looks much better than just having our photos kind of floating there on the background and disappearing into the background. But we still get to take advantage of that gorgeous artwork that's in the background. Okay, so let me just recap while this one is on here. I know people are saying, uh, you know, hope I remember all of these tips, that kind of thing. So the first one was the idea of cutting and gutting, right? So let me pull that one back if I can find it now. So cutting your heavily patterned paper, you can either cut strips or you could do like a hollow frame flip the, the internal piece around and have a you know, more tonal area. So you can cut and gut. You can also mat. Matting is probably the easiest if you don't have access to uh, making borders around your, your, your photos. And then we've also talked about, see I'm losing my papers now. We also talked about finding the areas that had that provided the most amount of contrast for your photos. And then when we did our last one, which of course I did not adhere down, but looking at the space that you have and working within that and not having your photos fight the scene that um, is in the background. Okay. So like I said, I, I started to cut one of these papers to show you again how you could cut and gut some of these uh, fast to fab papers, but I definitely need uh, two packs here because those tonals on the back work so beautifully with all of the rest of the life at the lake as well. So do yourself a favor and get two packs of the fast to fab inspired papers, one to use as tonals and one to play with, because I think you're going to find that you're going to enjoy uh, using these fast to fabs when you use some of those tips. Uh, I did allude to this, but I didn't really talk about it too, too much. But again, if you're, you know, kind of looking at the stickers and you say, hmm, I don't really love the ones that have, you know, a lot of white around it or some of the, the embellishments that have kind of that white border. This one's a better example. Okay. Because maybe that you feel like they look a little bit cartoony. Just again, look at how they're going to stand out against a fast to fab type of paper or against a fairly heavily patterned paper. That white border is basically like a mat for the embellishments. Okay. So if you don't love this style, I, I, I challenge you to just sort of think of it that way. The white border is like a mat for your photo or, or just like the mat on your photos, but it's like a mat for the embellishment. And that's what helps it stand out from patterned or, uh, you know, larger areas 
that, you know, you might want to put it on. Okay. So just a little bit of a challenge to think about that a little bit differently. And perhaps that is something that is going to help you use any of those types of papers that we talked about. So whether it's some of these papers that we have in some of our other current paper packs, or it, that you're working with the brand new Life at the Lake, all of those types of tips will be helpful to you. Just remember the one word. If there's only one word you take away and you can think about when you're working with these papers, is to create contrast. Contrast is everything. Contrast is what will help your photos stand out from the papers. It will help your, um, you know, any journaling, that kind of stuff, stand out from those busy papers. Look for areas of contrast. Look for ways to contrast uh, or to create contrast on your layouts. All right, so hopefully that one word will stick with you and help you when you are working with any of these types of heavily patterned, thematic, um, photographic, all of those kinds of papers that will, will be your, your best sort of guiding principle to use. Okay, all right, well, I'm seeing lots of, uh, lots of positive comments there. So uh, give me a thumbs up now if you think that Life at the Lake is, is a collection that you can work with. Uh, if you're still, you know, kind of concerned or you're thinking, I don't know if I'm going to get it yet, you know, uh, give me a thumbs down. That just helps me kind of get a gauge for whether I've helped you uh, or not. So I'd love to see thumbs up or thumbs down. Yes, I can use these types of papers with that tip, with those tips, or no, they're still not quite for me. All right. That, that helps me understand where you guys are at. Uh, okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here by just reminding you that the Life at the Lake Buy It All Bundle. So again, if you want to get all of the, the decorative pieces, so that's the two paper packs, the four embellishment packs, the stickers, the variety map pack, and the tent and trees border maker cartridge, which of course we didn't even have time to talk about today. We didn't even have time to talk about adding those fun extras. Um, but if you want all of those, don't delay and make sure you choose the buy it all bundle option. You get 10% off and that's available until April 12th. Okay. So like I said, I would be getting the buy it all bundle. And then with that little bit of money that I saved, I'd be buying myself an extra pack of the fast to fab inspired papers. All right. So I hope you enjoy those next week. As I mentioned, I will not be here, but make sure you tune in because there definitely is going to be some tips and tricks and ideas and inspiration for you. I will be looking through all of your um, questions that you provided in that survey, all of the suggestions for tips that you want to see, and I'll be pulling several and putting that together in a little video for you. So that will be next Wednesday's Fasted Fun. And then I will be back two weeks from today. So that's April 17th. Yes, April 17th, 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So we will be back together live. I hope you join me then because, of course, I'm sure we'll be doing something fast and something fun. And who knows if there'll be some new stuff to play with or not. But I hope that you have a great time playing with Life at the Lake. Can't wait to see your layouts. If you are in the Virtual Crop Facebook group, definitely show us your layouts um, that are, you know, that were inspired by today's session or that use Life at the Lake so that you can pass on some of those great tips like using the X-Acto knife, ladies. Uh, you can pass on your own great tips for using these kinds of papers. I'm seeing lots of uh, thumbs up, so I'm very pleased that uh, some of the tips I gave you will enable you to use them. All right. OK, have a great couple of weeks. I will look forward to seeing many of you who are the achievers who earned the trip. I'll look forward to seeing you next week in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and we were going to have a great time. And then I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys again and having a great time with you again in two weeks. All right. So take care. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.